Hi everyone, welcome to this video on getting started with the Gantt chart component of Syncfusion in a Blazor WebAssembly application. In this video, I will explain how to create a Blazor application and add the Syncfusion Blazor package. Then I will show you how to add the Syncfusion Blazor Gantt chart component to the Blazor WebAssembly application. After creating a Gantt chart, I will add prominent features like timeline view, editing, and filtering to it. To explore all the features of Gantt chart component, Visit our website link provided in the above YouTube card. You can create a Blazor application using either Visual Studio 2019 or Visual Studio Code. In this video, I will create a Blazor WebAssembly application using Visual Studio 2019. I have installed .NET Core SDK 3.1.3. To follow along with this video, one should have a basic understanding of c -sharp, HTML and CSS. You can also watch a descriptive video on Blazor and Syncfusion controls titled Create a Blazor WebAssembly app and add Syncfusion Blazor components, which I have shared in the YouTube card. Using Visual Studio 2019, I create a new project. I select the Blazor app template, provide the project name as My Blazor app, and click Create. I select the Blazor WebAssembly app template and I proceed by clicking the Create button. Now, Visual Studio has generated a Blazor WebAssembly application. To use Syncfusion Blazor components, I need to install the Syncfusion Blazor NuGet package in my application. To do that, I open the NuGet package manager by right-clicking the project file and selecting Manage NuGet packages. Under the Browse tab, I search for the Syncfusion Blazor package. I select it and click the Install button. The installation is completed now. You can check the dependencies folder and the packages folder and you will find the Syncfusion Blazor package added to this application. Next, the Syncfusion Blazor service must be registered in the services collection. For that, I open the program.cs file and use the Syncfusion Blazor namespace. Within the main method, I make a call to the add Syncfusion Blazor method this makes Syncfusion Blazor services available within the application. Next, I must register a valid Syncfusion license key. To do so, in the first line of the main method, I call the Syncfusion Licensing Syncfusion License Provider class static method register license. You also need to pass your Syncfusion license key as a string parameter in the register license method. I have done this off screen. Within the root folder, Open the index.html file. Within the head tag, add the required CSS file to render the Syncfusion Blazor components. In this example, I refer the CSS file from the installed Syncfusion Blazor package. Now, let me add the Syncfusion Blazor Gantt chart in the index component. I use the Syncfusion Blazor Gantt namespace to add the Syncfusion Blazor Gantt chart component. Adding this namespace here, will allow me to use the component markups. Also, I can import this namespace in the imports.razor page to make it available in all the razor components within this application. I remove the existing code and type a sfgan tag and set the height and width. Next, I create a data source for GAN. Using the code directive, I add a public class task data and add properties like task ID, task name, start date, end date, duration, progress, and subtasks with respective types. To store the task details, I create a public list of task data property name task collection. I create a public static method that returns the list of task data and name it get task collection. In it, I add codes to create one parent task and two child task records. I override the onInitialized method, which will be called when the component is initialized, and set this task collection with the getTaskCollection returning object. Now, in the sfgant tag, I add the data source property and set the value to task collection. Next, I need to assign the task field details. I add the tag gantt task fields and set the ID as task id and name as task name, start date as start date, end date as end date, duration as duration, progress as progress, 
and finally child as subtasks. Now I have configured Gantt chart to show the task details. Let me save the file and run the application. You can see the Gantt chart with the task data. There are seven types of timeline view modes available in Gantt chart. They are none, week, day, hour, month, year, and minutes. The default mode is week. Let me show you what the month view mode looks like. In the SF Gantt tag, I add the Gantt timeline settings tag and add the timeline view mode property and set the value to month. I can also set the unit size using the timeline unit size property and set the value to 200. I save the file and run the application. You can see the Gantt chart in month view with the provided unit size. I will show you how to edit the values in a Gantt chart. There are four types of editing modes, namely cell, dialog, taskbar, and connector line. Let me show you how the dialog works. To enable editing in the SF Gantt tag, I add the Gantt edit settings tag and add the allow editing property and set the value to true. I add the mode property and set the value to dialog. I save the file and run the application. You can see the Gantt chart. When I edit the start date value, the changes are reflected in the grid and the chart. Next, I will show you how to enable filtering. To enable filtering in the SF Gantt tag, I add the allow filtering property and set the value to true. I save the file and run the application. You can see the Gantt chart with menu filter icons. When I click the ID filter, it shows a number filter pop up. When I click on the name filter, it shows the text filter, and for start date filter, it shows the date filter menu. When I click the ID filter, it opens the number filter menu pop up, and I type value 2 to filter the values that equals ID 2. I click the filter button. Now you can see the record with ID 2 and its parent record with ID 1. There are other customization options available in filtering which I will cover in the upcoming videos. If you need more information about Syncfusion Blazor Gantt chart component, you can refer to our online documentation. A link is provided in the description of this video. Finally, let me summarize the main points. I have explained the steps to create a Blazor application and add the Syncfusion Blazor package. Then I showed you how to add the Syncfusion Blazor Gantt chart component to the Blazor WebAssembly application. Finally, I explained the different timeline views, editing modes, and filtering. You can download this working example from the GitHub link in the video description below. You can also see about getting a free license key to use our Blazor products if you are eligible for our community license. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching.